Hi, this is Patrick again. In our last screencast, we demonstrated how to use the Marco templating engine to render HTML on the server with Express. In this screencast, we are going to continue with the previous project and introduce Marco custom tags. Custom tags allow developers to encapsulate rendering logic by extending the HTML grammar with new building blocks. Custom tags are easy to create and they can be embedded in any Marco template. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a new components directory. This components directory will be used to hold our application's UI components. Each UI component should be a self-contained and independently testable UI module that can be used as a building block for pages or other more complex components. In this demonstration, we will be creating UI components that can be embedded in other templates using a Marco custom tag. The first component we are going to create is a simple hello world component. Let's create a directory named app hello to hold the files for our new UI component. The name of the directory will determine the name of the custom tag as we will demonstrate later. We use the app prefix to make it clear that this custom tag was introduced by our application and that it is not part of the standard HTML grammar. Let's now create a Marco template to render our custom tag. In the app hello directory, let's create a template that will be used to render the custom tag. The template should be named template.marco. Let's now add some markup to the template. There's one more required step before we can start using our custom tag. We must tell Marco where it can discover our application's custom tags. To do that, we're going to create a Marco taglib.json file in a directory that is common to both our pages and our components so that it will automatically be discovered by the Marco compiler when compiling nested templates. We will put this JSON file in our source directory. This JSON file will have a single property that is used to specify the directory that should be scanned for custom tags. We'll give it the relative path to our components directory. Let's now try out our new custom tag in the template for our main page. Let's get rid of the old code and replace it with our app hello tag. HTML attributes are used to pass data to a custom tag. Let's add a name attribute and a message count attribute. I've restarted the server. After refreshing the page in the web browser, we see that the custom tag was used to render the HTML. In our example, we are using a Marco template to render a custom tag. This works great for a simple custom tag, but if you have complex rendering logic, then it is better to create a JavaScript function to use as the tag renderer. This allows you to keep complex logic out of the template and instead place it in a JavaScript module where it is easier to maintain. If the Marco compiler finds a renderer.js file in a tag directory, then it will use that module to render the custom tag. Let's try it out. So here we create a renderer.js file. This module should export a function that will be used to render the tag. A tag renderer function should have two parameters. The first argument will be the input data as a standard JavaScript object. We will use input as the parameter name. The second argument will be a wrapper around the writable output stream. We will use out as the parameter name. We can write directly to the output stream using out.write. So let's try it out. Let's say out.write, hello. We will read the name property from the input argument. All right, let's try out the updated custom tag. Back in the browser, we refresh the page after restarting the server. Here we see that the JavaScript tag renderer was used to render the new output. However, our tag is no longer using a Marco template to render the HTML. Let's fix that by updating the JavaScript renderer to delegate rendering to a Marco template. 
Back in our editor, we are going to update our JavaScript tag renderer to import the template that we created earlier. We're going to use a relative path to import our template. With our template imported into a local variable, let's use the template's render method to render the tag's HTML. So we'll say template.render. The first argument will be the template data that we'll fill in in just a second. And the second argument is going to be the output stream. We're going to use the output stream that was given to us. To build the template data, we're going to read in some properties from the input. So we'll say var name equals input.name. We'll also read in the message count. And we're going to pass that data to our template as part of the template data object. For demonstration purposes, we'll manipulate the input data before it's passed to the template. So we'll say if name, if the name is provided, we will convert it to uppercase. If a name is not provided, we'll use a placeholder name of no name. Let's now switch back to our main page template and try an additional usage of our custom tag. So we'll say app hello, and this time we're going to leave off the name attribute, and instead we're only going to provide the message count. So we'll say message count equals one. With those changes now in place, let's refresh the page. We now see that we are using our JavaScript tag renderer and a template to render each usage of the tag. Now is a good time to introduce JSON tag definition files. As a tag developer, you can provide a tag definition file to validate custom tag usage at compile time, and to also provide extra type information for tag attributes. Currently, our example custom tag does not have an optional tag definition file, but let's go ahead and add one now. Let's first create a marco tag.json file in our tag directory. Let's add a property for each attribute supported by the tag. Each attribute property should be prefixed with an at sign. The value will be the expected attribute type. Let's also add a attribute definition for the message count attribute. Here, message count should be treated as a number. With the marco tag.json file in place, Let's test it out by adding an invalid attribute in our main page template. Since we have added an unsupported attribute, we would expect an error to occur the next time the template is compiled. Let's see what happens when we recompile the main page template. Back in the command line, we will use the Marco C command line compiler to recompile our page template. Here we see that the compiler is reporting that on line 11 in our page template that we provided an invalid attribute to our app hello tag. These friendly compile time error messages are a great way to catch errors early. The tag definition file is also important for controlling input types. The default type for any attribute is a string. Declaring our message count attribute as being of type number ensures that we get an actual number value instead of a string value. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at the compiled code for the page template with all errors fixed. For the first usage of the app hello tag, we see that the compiler produced code that generated the value for the name property as a JavaScript string. We also see that the compiler generated code for the message count property as a JavaScript number. The marco tag.json files impact how templates are compiled since the compiler uses the type information to produce the correct compiled output. In today's demonstration, we covered how to create custom tags. These custom tags can easily be embedded in other Marco templates to be used as building blocks. Marco provides flexibility in how custom tags are implemented, but the usage of a custom tag is always the same. Custom tags are a superior alternative to using partials since they provide better encapsulation of rendering logic. This is because a custom tag can have its own JavaScript controller if needed. 
Finally, the Marco compiler resolves all custom tags at compile time, and they are automatically imported into the compiled JavaScript module. Well, thanks for watching, and happy coding.